I mean, they're optional, right? But it's, it's, it's very permissive that you can use it. Uh, so make sure you go here. Right? So, so Vula is, is like the uh, de facto like UCT lane like in system, and so everything that that goes on uh, in uh, CS 1015 course is actually uh, posted onto Vula. There are a couple of interesting things that uh, you might have already picked up. So things like uh, you know watching the lectures uh, videos. In case you miss a, a lecture session, you can easily download the lecture vi uh, videos and then probably watch them at home. Or um, and then also, uh, all some programs that are run in class are uh, posted on Google Apps. Uh, so, I mean, this was pretty much uh, explained by Dr. Derenzi, uh, but just trying to emphasize the fact that uh, there's a prescribed or recommended way in which uh, you advise to to, to sort of like progress as you take this course, right? So make sure that you're taking notes in class. If you're not one of those who would rather, uh, you know, let's say to spend another 45 minutes to watch the lecture session once they're posted on Google. Um, and then make sure that you try out the, the programs in class. Um, it's, it's a good idea to be like uh, the gentleman here. You, you know, if you have a laptop, come with, uh, come with it to the lecture sessions and then try out the program as we are going through them, right? In fact, you can, if you don't have a machine, you could just as easily uh, install. There are plenty of Android apps that you can install, you know, uh, run Python code on you know, your Android device if you have an Android device. Incidentally, I have a QT Python installed on my Model G. Oh, yeah, sure. Officially starts today, right? Uh, so if you have if you have a problem, uh, if you have a, a, a problem that you can uh, solve on your own, uh, you are free to go downstairs and uh, see all you know, the senior tutors that are going to be available uh, during the hot seat sessions, which uh, ideally run from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, right? So before we start, are there any questions with regards to what we did last last week with Dr. Derenzi? Okay, no questions. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to sort of like carry on from where we left off with Dr. Derenzi. Uh, remember, we we did the uh, we looked at the built-in print uh, function, right? Um, so we're going to slightly do something different today because we're. We are, we, we are going to look at, we're going to start off by looking at the, the input built-in function, right? Um, and what we'll do once we, we, we basically uh, get up to speed with, uh, with what the function actually does is we'll look at uh, uh, how best we can rewrite uh, some of the problems that we did um, in the previous session. Right? Uh, so we'll look at the, uh, the sub-minimum example that we did with Dr. The, Terence, the, the and then we'll just uh, also look at a very simple basic example where we would uh, basically try and see how we can we can add two numbers uh, after we elicit input from the user, right? So, yeah. I'll try and scream, sorry. Uh, <coughs> right, so, 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 print line statement, we, we, we actually picked up a number of, of interesting things with regards to print line statement. Number one, and this is really important, right? We we discovered that um, the print, the print function is actually a part of um, Python's built-in collection of functions, right? Functions and classes, actually. Um, um, and, and, and we also we also discovered that it, it automatically or immediately becomes available to us uh, as we use the Python interpreter, right? The other thing that we discovered um, is that. It actually takes in uh, some rather interesting parameters here, right? We, we initially started off by, by, by making use of uh, the default uh, parameters where we would fit the print function with just uh, basic values, right? So string literals, um, integers, or floating point numbers, right? And then we, we later on progressed um, uh, when we were introduced to 
the optional parameters that are tied to the pre setting. So think of the safe uh, optional parameter and n optional parameter, right? Um, so 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 the thing with <laughs> the thing with the print print line setting is uh, you know the, the, the optional the optional parameters, right? The, the optional parameters. Um, just a quick a quick example. Uh, the, the optional parameters almost always have to appear after the values, right? So what we mean by that is that if if you you have a situation where you're trying to um, let's say just print uh, uh, extreme neutral test and a number four, okay, this is what happens. But but what we're trying to say is that uh, you can never have a situation where you have the the optional parameters appear before the values, right? So this is wrong, right? This is wrong. Right. It always has to appear after the value, right? Another thing we discovered is that, uh, uh, so the order of the, the same parameter and the end uh, of your parameters doesn't necessarily matter. So it doesn't really matter if you if you start with uh, either the same uh, parameter to specify uh, what to separate is going to be like. Uh, Right. This, so, so this runs. We know that, but we also know that uh, having and before before the same parameter should. Well, we'll run it. Right. So this way. Right. And then the other thing is just wanted us to 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 sort of like uh, remember is that. Uh, the, the print function actually takes in a number of other um, optional parameters, right? So, it's a, but for the, for the uh, purposes of this course, we know that um, we just going to stick with the safe and the um, uh, and the end parameter. But um, for those of us that are interested in knowing anything more about this, we know that it takes in not just the safe and the end optional parameters, but also the file and the flash, right? Uh, you can play around with these um, at your own time if you uh, feel like um, doing slightly more with. It. Right. All right, and then we, we played around with um, with a few examples. We looked at the quiz. I mean, this is easy stuff now because we know what is going on here, right? Um, um, easy here. Um, so um, we're going we're going uh, into the uh, the in part. So, so, so something else I wanted to mention is that um, Python actually comes bundled with a number of uh, Built-in functions. You don't know how many built-in functions Python has in total. Well, built-in, right? Let's just see built-in. I guess. Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the value. No, but they're built-in, right? So they come uh, bundled with the programming language. So the enough that comes bundled with it. So I was, I was counting yesterday. Uh, I, was, I was actually trying to count uh, to count them the other day, and I actually discovered that this is a magic uh, thing that you can uh, uh, use. Actually, is that there's a total of about 148 built-ins, right? So it's, it's a combination of both classes and um, and built-in functions, right? Um, you, you can you can take a look at this if you feel again like. Uh, being adventurous, you can take a look at all these different routines um, and then play around with, you know, whichever you fancy the most. Uh, you notice that uh, the help that I've been using, you know, to kind of like try and get a sense of uh, what the function is about is a part of the dot in the draw, right? So things like sum, uh, you know, power, right? Uh, uh, round, you know, but anyway. But for the purposes of this course, we're just going to, to look at a few of them, right? So the, so up to this point in time, what we've pretty much been um, doing is, at least when we're, when we're writing our programs, is we've been hard coding um, input values, right? So think of the sub beam example that we looked at um, last week with Dr. Derenzi. Uh, we, when, when Dr. Derenzi was walking us through the example, what he did was he hard coded the values of, uh, what are the, is it three or four uh, input uh, what do you call this? Is it input values that you need for you to cal uh, calculate um, uh, the final score, the, uh, the theory score, and the practical score? Yeah. 
Where'd you get you? Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, bottom line is that we've pretty much been hard coding uh, the user history, right? But in an ideal case, right, when you start seriously writing Python code, it's 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 highly unlikely that you you want to come up with a program where you you want to have code values, right? You want to you want to elicit user input um, and then have the program behave in a particular way depending on what the user um, supplies the program as input, right? So uh, uh, back to the sub minimum example, um, the uh, computing the final score, the practical score and the theory score will be different for each um, one of you guys sitting in here, right? So you want uh, a sort of situation where uh, if I give the program to the gentleman here, he'll be able to key in his uh, input values and then the program will uh, output the uh, output, but the output will be different from his because um, you would have different values as well, right? Um, so uh, key points, uh, the input uh, function is a built-in function, right? The other thing is uh, it takes in an, um, one optional parameter, right? which basically corresponds to the prompt, right? Uh, so we have an example here where um, we are basically trying to, so we're trying to ask the user to, to specify, you know, what the weather is like today. Um, and then the, the subsequent uh, 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 statement basically prints out um, the weather that corresponds to what the user has uh, supplied us in. Right. So here's what we're saying. Um, um, Example is that um, ideally what we've been what we've been doing is um, all along at this is that uh, we, we basically define um, a variable right uh, that holds like a static uh, value or something. Yeah. Let's say today is uh, I don't know it's this open it's like warm or something. Um, so this is what we've been doing all along, right? Right. But what we're saying is that we don't want to do this anymore. Instead, we want to be able to, to, to have the user specify what sort of um, input value we want to, to, to associate with um, line number seven. Right? And so what we're saying is that instead of having uh, line number six here coming this out, what we want is a sort of situation where we make use of the, uh, the input function, right? And then we should try the prompt, right? What is the weather like today, right? And uh, let's not forget to save our, uh, our code, right? Our source code. And we're just going to save it from here. Uh, once we run the uh, the program, we want the user to be able to specify um, or, or specify the same stuff, you know, slightly warm. Um, and then what happens is I get the same um, the same response, right? But you notice that the, the the interaction that we have with our program now is is slightly dynamic in comparison to what we've been doing before, right? Because I can rerun this program, right? And I don't know, specify something else instead of and it's going to say the way that's <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're going to do some eval, because then that happens to be um, um, one of the built-in functions. Um, we actually get to eval this now. So what eval basically does is um, we want to, let's see exactly. Um, so what eval does is it, um, when a user specifies, let's say, um, a, uh, what do you call this, a generic, um, 
input, right? What email does is, because what the prompt does, is what I mentioned, is what prompt does is it, it returns a string, right? But the prompt, prompt is a function that returns a string. Yeah. Right? So when you are, let's say, performing mathematical computation, uh, obviously, you can't, you can't do math with string. Right? Yeah. If you want to convert your uh, string literals into um, your main data, right? Yeah. Of um, so what Eva does basically is just converts um, the string into your main data. Right? There's an interesting, so there's an interesting thing, and an interesting thread I came across in Slack of the about the dangers of using Eva. I'll probably post it on the discussion board so that people get it. In the sense of what I'm talking about right now. Yes. Okay, I just want to uh, ask that you're saying that it's it, um, that the string is actually a So what we're saying is that what EVAL does is um, um, so here's the thing, right? Um, string, right? Int, right? Again, string, right? What we're saying is that uh, int. Does it make sense now? <laughs> what we're saying is that, and we're going to get to this, that's why I'm. <coughs> but what we're doing is we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's just stick with the script for now. Um, we'll look at Eva when the time comes. Uh, for now, just know that when you have um, when you have a, a variable a that is a string but of numeric type, we know that four is a number, right? But in this case, it's it's a string, right? So, so here's the thing. Let's so say we have uh, four and five, right? If we say uh, if we say print uh, a plus b, what's the answer here? No, but it will, concatenation, right? <laughs> but we know that this is, this is, I mean, this is, I mean, come on, this is, that's not the answer, right? Yeah. Four, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, but we know that 4 plus 5 is not 45. This is because they are strings, right? Right? But what we want to do is we want to say, I'm sorry, sir? Give me input, right? What we're saying is this is what Eval does. Does this make sense? Thank you. Let's, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Right, so again, to just to emphasize the fact that two things we need to, well, a couple of important things we need to remember with regards to the input belting function. Um, it comes bundled with Python. We don't have to do anything available to us, right? As we're writing our code. And number two, it takes as input an optional prompt, right? And this is interesting. Does anyone know what the data type of the prompt would be like? I mean, what's it? The data type of the prompt. I mean, input prompt. The, it's a string. Ah, oh, this is a string. You think that's true? Then must. <laughs> So, so here's the thing, right? You uh, he, say it's a string, right? Yeah, this, this one is a string, yes, right? That, that works just fine. But do you think this would work? Yeah. No. Yeah. So then it's not a string. It's any printable. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Somebody knows what's happening. But anyway, um, so here's the thing. Uh, it's just a, a simple. Um, this is another simple example, but this time around we get to it, right? Uh, so we have, uh, in line number one, we have, uh, uh, we, we have uh, a variable name, right? Um, appropriate to name, I suppose. Um, and then what name does is it's a listing input from, from a user, right? Just asking the user what their name is. <laughs> and then afterwards, you have a print line statement. Yes. Okay. Is that, is that the answer to it? No, 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 no. It's the question. How come that um, the, the, the input function is able to determine whether the, the parameter is uh, a string or a number? Then later on, we have um, this function of the value of the Yeah, because that's, that's how it's implemented, right? And we'll, we'll get to know how, um, we'll get to know exactly how, um, 
how all these things uh, are done when we when we start learning about how to you know how to construct our own functions and all that. You know, but if you look at go and look at the help manuals, uh, the Python uh, documentation, then you can tell you exactly what it does. That is, the simple answer is that is how to implement it. It's, uh, it's, it's implementation is, um, is done in such a way that that is the sort of behavior that you want to expect with the program. Thank you. Trying to be gender sensitive. These are uh, five seconds here, right? I mean, let's move over this and then try and see if we can figure out what's going on. Or oh, maybe 10 seconds. We don't have a timer, but we don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, the lady with the Lenovo. Uh, I have the Lenovo, I think. Uh, what do you suppose the answer is? You are the only one with the Lenovo. <laughs> Lenovo. Uh, what do you suppose the answer is? I mean, if we. If we were to execute this, um, these two lines of code, what, what would we get? Well, uh, let's say if, if I, yeah, well, uh, obviously what we're doing in line number one is we're using you uh, for me. Let's assume um, I type in theory, right? Um, what would be the answer there? Or let's say you typed in your name. Let's not use my name, your name. Right? What would be the answer? Here? What would we get? Sorry. It's going to be. Um, it's going to be separation of it is like hello, dot dot dot, and then the name and then the tree. Thank you very much. Yes. So exactly. So, which is pretty much the same thing. So, uh, what we're saying is that uh, obviously hello is going to be separated by dot dot. Right, the separator, and then you have the, the name of the lady with the Lenovo, um, and then uh, you have three explanations. Yes. Why does it specifically separate? I suppose the name of the one? It's just how it's defined, how the parent functions are Like I'm saying, that's it. Is asking why why the, the separate uh, and separate is not a function it's a, it's a parameter right? he's asking why why hello is hello is going to be separated by uh, three dots uh, why the name is going to separate why hello and the name are going to be separated by the three dots um, and what the gentleman say here is pretty much uh, true because that's the way the uh, print function is defined. It's defined in such a way that when you explicitly, we know that by default, the separator is um, one space, right? And then the um, the end value is, is a character time. So what we're doing here is we're overriding that behavior, right? And we're telling Python to say, we want the, the, the separator to be two dots, right? Um, and we want the end to be three explanation. Again, my question is, why is it not necessarily it says the letter and then the name, and then why is it that not between the name and the three explanation marks at the end that the three dots will be at the end? Sorry, come again. So between the letter and the name, and yep. the three dots will why is it there as opposed to between the name and the name? Because what the separator does is it, it, it's supposed to separate your your values in the print in the print uh, document. So here's here's a simple example. Um, If you, if, you, if you don't override the default behavior of the separate, point, the separate um, uh, parameter there, this is what happens, right? But when we specify it, um, we have the dots. Does that make sense?
Right, so we already mentioned uh, the fact that the, the input belting function returns um, a string, right? Uh, or text. Uh, and then when we're, oh, this is working now. I thought I hit an echo somewhere. Hello, hello? <laughs> it's on. I hit an echo um, And then what we're saying is that, uh, When we're performing mathematical computations, we need to convert the string, right, that is returned by an input uh, function into numbers, right? And voila, what we're saying is that uh, we have, besides the input dotting function, we have uh, the eval function that does that for us, right? And what, what eval basically does is it converts, uh, what we're saying is that it converts a string into, into a number, right? Uh, so now we don't want to complicate it. But, but when, you, when you go to the, here's the thing, right? If I were you, I would invest time in, in, trying to, in, in trying to learn how to use the documentation because that is how you learn, right? Uh, there is no way that you'd memorize all the 162 uh, buildings that we looked at, for instance. You can't. Well, there are probably people amongst you who can do that, right? I mean, I can't. I, mean, I imagine the vast majority of us in here can't do that, right? What we're saying is that you need to, you need to realize that it's important to understand what's going on as opposed to memorizing it. Right? So, yes. I thought I saw an impact. I mean, I mean, a hand up. Sorry. So, what we're saying is that. Uh, so, what we're saying in the slides is that what Ivar does is converts um, a string, a string into a numeric type, assuming that the user inputs. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, assuming the user inputs um, a number as, as, as an input value, right? With a 14 point uh, number or an integer uh, uh, value, right? Um, but there's, there's something really interesting about, about this. Right? What, what you have, I'm trying to see if we, if we, if we could understand uh, what's going on. What, what do you suppose this would be here? And when you, when you find time and, and you read and understand what's going on here, what, what it does behind the scenes is, is it basically executes a, a Python code that is that corresponds to what you have in the street, right? So if we had, uh, look at this, if we had uh, 1 plus 3, this is what happened. So in actual fact, in as much as for the purposes of what we're doing, you just assume that uh, it's going to be converting uh, the, the string input values that we have into into numeric data types, but we know that um, in actual fact what it does is it executes a piece of code in the string, right? specifying the string. Um, so we have an example, a super example where we are converting um, the, the, the string 20 there into a numeric type, which is of type int, right? Uh, so that becomes a number. Um, and then besides eval, we know that, um, well, we now know that uh, we also have uh, int and for that pretty much do the same thing, right? The, the only thing here is that uh, the behavior that the be I'm sorry, yeah, we need to use uh, stuff that people are, are used to. Here. The the behavior that What, what this does is it converts uh, it converts the, the the string 20 into um, a numeric uh, a numeric uh, number 20 corresponding to an int, right? And we know it's an int because we can check the type of this thing, right? Yeah. Right. But what we're seeing with regards to the int uh, to the int function and the float function is that. We, we, can, we can actually use the int function just as we would use eval to achieve the same behavior, right? We could just as well easily use the float function, and float is not really a function, it's a class. This, we can use the float function to do that. Does that make sense? Okay, 
it's just a, a simple uh, a simple example on how we we'll go about using um, uh, using the input uh, built-in function the eval, and, and the eval uh, built-in function is uh, here we have an algorithm to compute the body mass index. Um, so we know that the, the formula for the body mass index is uh, weight divided by the square of, 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 of the individual's height, right? And we know that, uh, you please switch off the phone, uh, and we know that um, for us to be able to, to compute this by listing input from the user, we need the user to specify two in, input um, input values, right? The height and the width, right? So what we're saying is that uh, how we go about doing it is it's a four-step process. We first of all elicit input using the input function, right? So prompt the user to specify the width, prompt the user to specify the height, and then step number two is we convert, because we know that the body mass uh, index formula is a mathematical uh, formula, we want to convert the input values into numbers, right? So what we're doing is, what we'll do is we'll have to convert the string input values into numeric data types, and we use the eval function, right? Step number one, elicit input. Step number two, convert the strings into numeric data types. Step number three, compute your mathematical expression. Step number four, print out the result. Four step process. You could reduce this four step process into maybe two, maybe three step process by combining what is happening in line number uh, three and four, right? What we're saying is you could, you could just as well, uh, someone already mentioned this, you could easily do this, right? Uh, Process, we, we, we do this, right? We prompt the user for input. But what we're saying is that we could com we could reduce this. We could reduce step one and two into one um, uh, one uh, one step by by just grabbing the input from the user like that, right? Same thing happens. The prompted uh, to sort of like enter input and then we do it. Right? This is what we're saying. To simplify all this, the four-step process: input, conversion, computation, and then uh, printing out the output. His question is, would it matter if, um, if if the input coming in from the user is a float or an in? It doesn't matter. It, it actually, it's it, 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 uh, it's a superset of what the, the in and the float function do for you. Right? So if the user enters um, a floating point number, it will convert that string floating point number into a floating point number. If it's an integer, it will do that. I suppose that's in part the reason why we're doing this, right? We are advocating for the use of the eval function. Right. So is it then necessary to learn about the flow in the end? Oh, not really necessary. I mean, for the, so, so you probably spend a lot of your time using the eval function. It's just uh, it's probably good to know what int and float do. The question might come in the exam, so you might want to mean it's in the mouth. So, so we're going to. We didn't want to to, to use this as um, this is a complex example. We didn't want to use it. We want to use something relatively simple. Right? What we're trying to do is we want to add um, two numbers that are entered by the user, right, and then bring the result to the screen, uh, to the screen right? Standard output. Um, so we know that uh, same drill. We start with the annotation, right? Add two numbers, right? We're saying it's a four-step process. Step number one, it is it input, right? Step number two, convert string to numeric. Step number three, we are saying compute mathematical expression, right? Step number four, we are saying print out, uh, print out, right? <coughs> and I'm annotating all these things because it's, it's, it's a good way to, 
to, I mean, as you're getting started, it's a nice way to, to try and uh, make sure that you don't, you don't miss out any important steps here. So we know that we will require the user to enter two input values, right? We, we could call those uh, number one and number two, right? as you are doing all this to make sure that you're doing the right thing, right? So what I would do is I would basically just print out uh, bar number one and, and bar number two to standard output just to, to make sure that, you know, the, the program is behaving the way that I want it to behave before I pro progress to the uh, subsequent steps, right? So you notice that uh, once we receive input from the user, uh, if I enter one and, um, and 10, it's gonna print out. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, someone, here. were you trying to? Were you trying to wait for me to <coughs> suck here? Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, let's, let's wait for him to fail. Um, <laughs> bragging rights. It's because it's muscle memory for me right now. I've, I've been doing this for a relatively long period of time. I suppose on and off, but the fact that I understand what's going on makes it a lot easier. I mean, I, I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't really program in, in Python um, as frequently as I would want to. It's just for simple scripting tasks. But but I can read the manual and simple tutorials today and tomorrow, and then you know, I mean, everything comes back to me. But so what we're saying is that uh, one and let's print now. Print out one. Print right. Step number two. We want to convert the. We want to convert. Why do we type it? We want to convert the um, the string types into numeric types, right? Step number uh, three: We want to compute our our final result, right? And then the final step is we print out the, the result. Right, so what we're saying is if we try and ask this simple, this very basic primitive, simple uh, Python program to say compute one plus one, it should print out two, right? And we can do a, a number of other funky things because uh, you know we can do it now. Uh, we can say the result is The result of one and three is four. And we can further do uh, other funky things by saying the result of <coughs> So if we if we feed our program four and five it will tell us the result of four and five is nine. Oh I forgot the E's here. <coughs> Right. Is this making sense now? Uh, two things that we've done here: we uh, we are leveraging two uh, built-in uh, functions, the input uh, built-in <coughs> function and the eval function. Right. Simple. Is this making sense? Hi. Sorry. What's your name? What's your name? Terry. Terry. Yes. No. No, no, no. Because uh, remember when we learned about um, when we learned about about uh, what variables were, you know, space and memory and all that. You can. Um, by definition, you don't accept. Uh, what he's asking is, is it possible for us to do this? No. One button. Thanks, Terry. Right, so it's slightly, it's slightly, 
a slightly more uh, complex example. We, we're going back to the sub minimum example. And what, what we want to do is we want to figure out if we want to see if a particular user, once, once uh, a, a, a CS uh, 1015 F student uh, inputs the required values or parameters or input values, we want to see if uh, that guy gets DP or DPR, right? Uh, well, we won't see that because we won't use uh, selection statements. Right? We know that for us to get uh, DP must be 50% from, from the exam, 55% uh, from the practical, 45% uh, from uh, the theory, right? But what we want to do is just want to uh, compute, once a user enters uh, the required input values, we want, we want to see um, the results of their final score, um, their theory score, and their practical score, right? So we did this with Dr. Derenzi, and all we are going to do basically is um, redo it by not hard coding the input values in the source code, right? Uh, let's just quickly go to this. Thank you. 
has, has anyone has anyone bothered to ask themselves or maybe already you know why 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 we are reusing the line number 50 why we are reusing the same variable for underscore exam sorry